Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing So You Want to Play Huns, which is one of those civs that I played a lot of games on back in the day, but I kind of, it kind of fell off for me recently just because, you know, the CA at the start of DE were not the best unit and that's kind of the go-to unit for Huns. Uh, but it recently picked back up as the, you know, the CAs have been changed. And I think it's in a reasonably good spot right now where Huns is kind of like an upper mid, mid table sieve for these open land maps, most notably Arabia. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about Huns in an in-depth fashion. If you're new to So You Want to Play videos, a pretty brief explanation is simply we take a civilization, in this case the Huns, and we're gonna do a theoretical analysis of the sieve by taking a look at its bonuses and the tech tree to see how it's supposed to be played in theory. And then I'm gonna go ahead and play a game at the top of the ladder and show you guys how I you know, try to play this or how I like to play it um, and see a more practical approach for the civilization and then compare both the practical approach with the theoretical approach. If they match, then perfect. And if they differ, then we'll have to understand why. And I think the main purpose for this is really just to understand um, it's really just to understand how to play a Civ and give you guys a really good idea of how a Civ is played before you pick it up as your main or try it out in ranked games as well. So without further ado, let's hop into this one. We're gonna go ahead and queue up here with the Huns on this account, which is of course, I think rank 10 or something like that. It's pretty high up there now. Rank 15, good enough. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the technology with Huns and see what the Civ has to offer. So we're gonna do a live commentary for this one, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, let's hop into it. So the Huns are class classified as a cavalry civilization. Their first bonus is that they do not need any houses, but start with minus 100 wood. This is a bit of a double-edged bonus though, because not being able to build houses leaves your base quite open and not really, uh, it doesn't really give you a good skeleton structure of walls that you normally have with houses with other civilizations. So while this is an eco bonus that saves you build time and resources like wood long-term, uh, in, in certain cases, it could be a little bit awkward. Their next bonus is probably their most notorious one, which gives their cavalry archers minus 10% cost in castle age and minus 20% in imperial age. This used to be a bit higher, but it was recently changed, but I still think it's a relatively good bonus. And while minus 10% doesn't seem like a lot in castle, it lets you get away with three range CA production, which is a very, very strong strategy and allows you to mass those guys up quite quickly. The next bonus is a bit of a one that goes under the radar, but does come in handy sometimes, especially in treb wars, which is that the trebuchets get plus 30% accuracy. And this doesn't really help that much against buildings. This helps the most when it's trebuchet versus trebuchet in a literally a treb fight. Uh, and, uh, and in that case, this bonus is actually quite strong because winning that fight can actually you know, make or break a game usually. So uh, quite a nice bonus and helps you in certain situations there with the Huns. Unique unit is the Tarkin, which is the cavalry unit that has an attack bonus against uh, buildings. We'll talk a bit more that, about that one later. The unique text is the Marauder in Castle Age, which makes your Tarkins it would be produced at the stables. And in Imperial Age, it's called Atheism, which gives plus 100 year relic, wonder victories, whatever the case may be. No one really plays that one too much, but it also makes your enemy relics generate minus 50% resources, in this case gold. But resources is there because in case it's Burgundians, they'll make them generate less food as well, which is interesting. And then finally, their team bonus is that stables work 20% faster, which is one of their notorious ones as well, and a very, very solid one. So we can see that for Huns, Cavalry, both from Stable and Cavalry Archers are probably their go-to options. And if you take a look at the tech tree, it's exactly what we see. Their range is pretty decent, but they're lacking Arbalest and Hand Cannon here, so you really wanna play Cross for Skirm and Castle, but as soon as you go towards Imperial Age or even a Late Castle, you wanna be massing up the Cavalry Archers because that's where most of your upgrades will be and that's you know the unit that's actually gonna be cheaper. So uh, quite a nice discount there. Their barracks is actually quite bad, but you get access to halberdier with, with squires, sorry, not supplies. So their swordsman line is pretty weak, which I guess kind of hurts them in certain matchups like the Goths. Uh, and then their stables are quite decked out. You have fully upgraded Hussar, fully upgraded Paladin, and you also get Tarkin from the stable if you get your unique tech. So it's quite a solid, um, quite a solid stable tech tree here for sure. And then going on to the seed shop here, uh, their seed is quite lacking and the only one you can really go for is the seed ram. You're lacking onager and heavy scorpion and bombard cannon. So seed ram is pretty much the only thing you can use from the siege workshop. And then their blacksmith is, well, lacking infantry armor and lacking ring arch armor. This is okay because you do get Parthian tactics so the CA are quite strong, uh, but they're not gonna be the most powerful unit in late game, just kind of like a cheaper uh, version of a CA, which is already quite strong. Uh, and then obviously fully upgraded cavalry when bracer in there as well for the cavalrys and uh, skirmishers. 
Uh, their navy is pretty mediocre, lacking fast fire ships, but you do have the galleons with bracer and heavy demolition ships, so you do all right, but lacking shipwright makes you quite weak in the late game. As far as their university goes, they're lacking siege engineers, which is fine because their siege isn't great anyways, but they're also lacking bomber tower and architecture as well as fortified wall and even guard towers. So Huns aren't really going to be going past high school in this one, unfortunately, lacking a lot of things there in the university. Uh, and uh, it's not one of the strong points for sure. You usually only get a, uh, get a university for ballistics and chemistry. Uh, the Tarkin here costs 60 food and 60 gold, kind of similar to the price of a knight, a little bit cheaper on the gold cost though. And it has, let's take a look at the stats of the Link Tarkin. It has 11 base attack with four base pierce armor. The regular has three base pierce armor. And that's the most important thing you have to note for the Tarkin. It, at every age, both non-elite, so in Castle Age and Imperial Age, it has one extra Pierce armor compared to its counterpart. So in Paladin, has three Pierce armor, Elite Tarkin has four, Knight has two, this has three. And basically, the best thing to know about this unit is that it's good against archers and it's good at killing buildings. That's the best use of the Tarkin, but it has one secret use and that doesn't get talked about enough. It's the fact that you can actually upgrade this unit a lot faster than you can upgrade Paladin. So in a lot of cases, Elite Tarkin is actually the power play for Huns to kill archer sieves because it just takes one upgrade. It's really fast. Elite Tarkin, it costs 1,000 food and 500 gold, and you don't have to get Cavalier and wait for it. You don't have to get Paladin, which costs way more than this. So you just get one of the upgrade and bam, you already have a unit with 11 attack, 150 base hit points, and four pierce armor base, which when you add all the upgrades from the blacksmith, that's four plus four pierce armor, that's eight pierce armor total. That's close to Hustral stats right there. And its only weakness is really like Halberdier and other cavalry, but against against Archer Sivs, if they're you know committing to Arbalest, this could be like the unit that completely catches them off guard. And the good thing about the Tarkin, and now I'm spending a lot of time on this, the good thing about the Tarkin, is that it actually, you're able to end the game right then and there because of his damage to buildings. If your opponent is caught off guard, you send 30 of them into the economy, they'll lose all their town centers very, very fast, and it's hard for them to prepare a Halberdier switch if they're not already expecting it. The thing is, this is, at the high level at least, one of the most, like, like kind of like, known options like that hunts can do, because what are they going to do against arch archers? They have, like, skirmishers and hasaras options, but... I mean, those the Hussar is cavalry at the end of the day, so it's kind of easy to predict that Huns will go for cavalry. So usually Archisivs, sorry, I hit the mic, Archisivs can prepare Halbadir, but even still, Elite Tarkin is a really good unit to counter Archisivs and a really good unit to catch them off guard at times as well. Their monastery is not anything great. They have Sanctity, and that's pretty much it from the useful technologies. Harris is good against anti monk civs or to be anti monk, uh, and then they actually don't get the house funny enough there. You can't even build it for fun. Uh, or you know to quick pull or whatnot and then going on here to the economy bonus uh, or economy text i should say they're getting pretty much everything except cooperation but it's not that useful an upgrade anyways fantastic so that's a pretty good overview of the huns in a nutshell they specialize with cavalry and they're played on open land maps generally speaking they're terrible on closed land maps because of the lack of siege options and on water maps they're nothing special so pretty much hybrid maps like four lakes they can be played on or open land maps like land madness arabia crater whatever it may be is really where the Huns specialize. And I'd say they've got two major options, which is Tarkin Switch in the late game and Cow Archers in the mid game and late game. Uh, but as far as the Feudal Age, it's very flexible. They can play Archers, they can play Drush, they can play Scouts, they can play a bunch of things in the early game because they're saving wood from the houses and they have one of the smoothest starts in the game. So if there's anything I can sell you guys when it comes to the Huns, it's really just a smooth start. You never need to build houses, so you don't have to have that annoyance of getting housed. It lets you play as aggressively as possible. You have faster working stables that gets you the initiative, good eco in the early game, and then cheaper cavalry archers that makes for a deadly all-in. And then if you get to late game, you have some really good options like uh, like the Tarkins that I talked about, and then you can also go for Heavy CA plus Hussars, which is a very strong combination as well. So really, all, overall, very strong options here, and I think it's a sieve worth picking up if you like to play those aggressive settings. Looks like we found a game here, and I was getting worried that we were on the wrong patch there for a second, but I think we're good. I think we're good. So let's go ahead and ready up here with the Huns. I'll get a quick sing of water, and then we'll hop into a live commentary. Well, I'm going to be playing as, against Asamita here as the Aztecs. Okay, pretty good. Huns against Aztecs here. And that's a pretty uh, common civilization. So no houses makes the start slightly awkward, but usually if you find your sheep right away, that's uh, the perfect situation. If you don't find your sheep, the best thing to do is take straggly trees or scout with your villagers to find the sheep instead of just standing there and waiting to find your sheep with just the scout. All right. Everything's good on this side. I'm going to minimize 
the OBS and everything like that. All right, cool. Let's go around this forest. So hunting his Aztecs, and as usual, okay, he didn't want to go around for some reason. As usual, when I think about the matchup real quick, I guess Aztecs, how do I want to open up? A scouts, I guess, is fine, but I don't really like going scouts because uh, Mezzos have sent to open men arms and then just wall up pretty comfortably. And then they can mix in some eagles, which could be deadly if you're going scouts into skirmishers. So I don't like scouts opening too much. Maybe archer opening can be pretty good for me, actually. Just straight up archers can be pretty fine. I also have the option to draw Shurgo men arms myself. All are totally fine options. And I guess in the mid game, I want to be playing something like either knights against his eagles. Or Cav Archers can be okay against Eagles and times as well. I think those are my best options right there. Um, in a nutshell, of course, we're assuming he's going to go Eagles and Castle Age. If he goes Crossbows, that's totally fine as well. Aztecs don't get Thumb Ring, so we'll be totally fine to put pressure in Castle Age if he goes for Crossbows. With either Knights and Siege or our Cav Archers, uh, or even our own Crossbows, we'll see. Okay, so judging from my map, I can do a pretty easy wall. Like, I can actually go Drush FC. I have an amazing map with back gold, back woods. Only thing that's on the front is the berries, but even that I can kind of wall in. So Drush FC is definitely on the cards here. I want to commit to it. I think I might commit to a Drush FC. It's just, it's so smooth here. My map is so good that it's hard to say no to a Drush FC. And Hans have a really smooth eco because not needing the houses saves you a lot of wood in the early game. And that's obviously very important for Drush Fast Castle. I had to fix my uh, my situation on the seat. But we're all good now. Alright, let's go scout my opponent now. I've scouted a really good portion of my map. I know where all my golds and stones are, so it's a really good time. Alright. Alright, let's just go scout my opponent now. And the one strategy that's like hard to do with the Huns opening is the pre-mill drush. That's the one strategy I'd say like stay away from because it's not, it's not really, it's not impossible. But with the 100 wood that you're missing, it's not the best. Like you, you don't get a smooth opening there with that strategy. So I'd recommend staying away from that one in particular. But any other strategy I'd say is pretty fair game with the Huns here. And definitely a standard drush FC works just fine as well. I got a board in the back, which is pretty good. He's got his berries here. Let's pick up that second four now. I think this one's kind of running out. Maybe a bit early though. Maybe one more to the berries first. Sometimes it's hard to know. I usually judge based on distance. Like that one has to go a little bit around a wood line, which could be annoying at times. So let's just go pick it up now. I'd rather have my boar five seconds early than one second too late, uh, generally speaking, because one second too late results in idle time, which is like eight, eight or seven villagers idle time, even if that's like a few second idle time. That adds up to a lot of resources. All right, his eagle's coming as a little bit of a gift for us here. We'll definitely take it when it comes our way, though. He might kill some of the sheep, though. And no, it looks like we're going to be fine on that area as well. And I'm going to have to kite this boar a little bit here. He's saying great. He's not happy about that one. Well, uh, I don't know, man. Next time, you gotta gotta keep those eyes open, man. It happens. That's the best thing to say here. I'm gonna get our barracks down, so I'm gonna commit to my Drush FC. I see no reason to go away from that, really. I mean, I did kill his eagle, but if anything, that makes the Drush FC even more powerful because he's not really gonna know how my map looks like, and he's not gonna know that I'm gonna be going for this for a while now. So I start walling, I just slowly start to wall. Usually a couple villagers in the early game is a good amount. Hunts wanna start earlier because you don't have any houses. So if you're gonna go for a Drush FC, you probably wanna wall a little bit earlier than with a regular sieve that's naturally building houses. Get onto the gold next. Fantastic here. And I guess I'll start walling at the front here. The front is a pretty big task, but we'll, we'll manage that one for sure. And I'll go towards his berries most likely. And yeah, just one number can't make sense here. Man, just such good economy here. Not needing houses is just, even with the minus 100 wood at the start, it's, it just makes it so smooth. Because that build time that you save is really smooth, and just the wood that you save is also very smooth. Once you make four houses, you know, that, that's already more than the 100 wood that you give up. Oh no, that's the same amount. Never mind, the 25 is this. Alright, let's move out here with the militia. I guess this villager can come help finish this area. And the militia are already moving out. Oh, what's going on here? 
Okay, this wood line is great. Oh, but he is actually hitting me on the way. I was looking at my mini map, so good thing I was able to find that one. And we might be able to win this rush fight. I'm usually terrible at these, but I caught him here and he might go Drush FC himself here. I'm gonna just wall there. He might go Drush FC himself, but we caught him and you know what? I'll take that win. I'll take that win for sure. Get one more on the wood line here. That's a small win for us, but it means we can wall with less villagers because I know he's gonna probably go for like a FC behind us or if he wants to pressure us to fuel itch, he'll be late to that in any case. Oh, he's not walling the wood. That's really ambitious, actually. To not go for any walls in the woods. When I have two militias and a scout. Maybe I can get some damage here. Maybe he's confident. Eh, probably not the best idea for me, though, here. I thought maybe I can get one, but it doesn't look like... It. She is kind of weak, though. I can kind of hover around here and wait for the right moments. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of idle time as well, though, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, need just... Okay, one H, one, uh, one wood. There we go. Quite quite a messy builder, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a no loomer here. I'm greedy. When, it, when it's fast castle, it was fast castle. I wish I had to play as greedy as possible, especially if I'm full walled here. And just causing him a lot of mayhem there. And with the Dresh, you don't necessarily need to kill villagers. Just buying yourself time to wall is the biggest idea with it and then just harassing your opponent just bothering him i swear the tilt factor that you get from this half the time is enough to win the game like this is one of the most tilting things in, in, that anyone can do to you like i'm sure we can all agree that no one likes to be on the receiving end of this little like dance oh he teleported okay that's a good way to stop it fast feudal from him make sure we're full walled because that's the most dangerous thing really if you're, if you're full walled it's very safe to do a dredge fast castle most of the time uh, can I get this one? Uh, he, he's really he's really playing well though. He's not letting me actually get, but that's a lot of idle time though. He's not letting me get any freebies though, but still idling his economy a lot. Okay, he's getting some quick walls down. Okay, looks like he's gonna be able to kill that that one in the end. I'm not sure what elo this guy is, by the way. Not the fastest quick walls I've ever seen here. We are preventing him though, being very annoying. And when they go for a range, you could go for a stable. Like, Drush FC Knights is not a bad option here as well. And it looks like there's actually a hole there. Oh no, there's no hole, never mind. So it looks like he's gonna get away with that one. You could go Drush FC Knights, it's not a bad idea, but in this case, I feel like just Drush FC Crossbows makes so much sense. Drush FC Crossbows is just a completely fine strategy. And there's an option to go Dresh FC CA to you, directly CA. Hmm, that's interesting as well. I think I like Archers better though. Dresh FC Crossbow lets you really put the pressure on. We don't need to do that, we can just go up right away. Yeah, Dresh FC Crossbow lets you put the pressure on a little bit better than CA does. Although Dresh FC CA is not bad in and of itself as well. Nothing really inherently wrong with that. I just feel like, ooh, there's a weak, weak feel there. I just feel like the CA come out too slow and boom. I guess that's maybe the only problem there. We'll snipe the farm as well. Okay, this guy's not having uh, the best time here. Oh! Wow! The GG's called. Oh man. I don't know. What elo is this guy? I don't, guys, I don't think this is the highest level player. I don't think this is the highest level player. He was, he was playing very weird. Let's take a look at what elo. Oh my god, I played against a 1200 yellow player for a guide. It didn't even give me zero points. Is this on the old patch? I'm playing on like a beta or something. What is happening? Okay. Well, I guess that's the end of the video. Do I even upload this video? I don't, dude, I don't, I don't even know what happened. I think I played on the wrong patch or something was off here. All right, well, anyway. I guess that was so he wants to play Huns. I, I mean, I guess I was gonna go for crossbows and then transition to CA and then CA Hussar is a really good comp composition in general. You have the option of playing Paladin or Cavalier in early game or early Imp rather, but obviously we didn't get to see a lot of those strategies. Um, but yeah, I guess that's a just a showcase of how smooth the Huns eco can be and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and bye for now and 
If you're watching this in the subathon on Twitch, don't forget to sub it up and keep the stream going. Take care. See you guys next time. Peace.